Hello, BookTube. We're going to continue with our Western Canon starter kit. Uh, for those of you who might be new to the channel, this is I'm, I'm giving a, a multi-part, uh, but finite, I promise I'm not going to do this forever, uh, walkthrough of the very basics, a stripped-down version of the Western Canon uh, that you can actually go out and read without going back to school, without studying, without taking night classes, without seminars, just to go out and read these the, a basic stripped down version of the most influential books for the literature that you grew up reading. That all literature works in the shadow of earlier literature. So these things are at the heart of what you do. So uh, we did the Bible. <laughs> I suggested a few easy, uh, scholarly, reputable, but accessible translations of a few books of the Bible, some key books of the Bible for you to read something that taken all together wouldn't take you more than a day or two to read and then i suggested homer of course there's really no way around that's a, a large investment of time there's no real way around it the iliad and the odyssey and then we did the greeks uh a very basic uh grouping of of the greeks uh and since we did the greeks we, <laughs> you could probably see it coming we're now going to do the romans uh, and with the Romans, things change it, quite a lot, conceptually, because in a lot of ways, the Romans are direct precursors of the modern world. There were long periods after them where the world went back to being really strange. But as far as the, the, the uh, modern, secular, humanist West, the Romans the, of the, the time period I'm talking about, which is from the late Republic to, to you know, the first 200 years of the Empire, is immediately recognizable. Uh, and among the many things that the Romans perfected, most of them were bad, but among the many things that the Romans perfected, one of them was the modern book industry, which they perfected and kept going for a long, long time, and then it went to abeyance when they went into abeyance, and then it came back in a form that they would immediately recognize as well. They invented the idea of mass-produced literature. They invented the idea of a mass audience for literature. It was no longer an enclave for the nobility or for the wealthy or for the you know, expensively educated. Popular editions suddenly start, started springing up. And a book industry started springing up with a bookseller row. In fact, many of them, one particular neighborhood at the base of one particular hill of Rome, was entirely given over to booksellers, copyists, printers, bookshops with advertisements at, on, on the lintels on the front door, uh, the equivalent of a shop window. Um, and the Romans also gave birth to the, the uh, whole business of promoting a book as a commercial object rather than an adjunct to school or a byproduct of very high tone philosophy. It was all of a sudden possible if you were, let's say, uh, a low-grade, minor-born minor born Roman nobleman going about your day, it was all of a sudden possible for you to encounter the same piece of literature at every rung of the ladder. So uh, if there were a, a very funny poem by the latest enfant terrible that had been set to a catchy tune, you might hear it from your barber, you might hear it at the bread shop, you might hear it at the baths from a, from a senator. And it, uh, it, it, the reason for that is because the, the Romans created a different concept of the book. <laughs> and for good or ill, and there's a lot of ill, it's largely the concept that we have now. Uh, for the first time, it appears with them, recognizably in what it would later, would later become, it's pretty much codified modern form. And that's good in one in some ways for the purposes of our Western Canon starter kit because uh, the Romans are very recognizable. They, of all the classical literature, of all the, war, of all the literature in the Western Canon, especially the ancient Western Canon, they're by far the most approachable. Uh, but it, pre it presents a problem <laughs> that isn't good, and, and that is that uh, because the Romans largely invented the book trade as a commercial thing, they also largely invented long books. <laughs> and uh, in this stripped down Western canon version of, of, the, our, of the Romans segment, 
unfortunately, the two books that I have to that I have to push on you are both long. Uh, the the Roman literature is a, is a whole world unto itself, and unfortunately, uh, for our purposes, we're just going to whistle right through that world. I strongly recommend and deeply love, for instance, the poetry of of Propertius, Catullus, and my beloved Horace. Deeply love them. It's problematic to find a good translation. I, if you are interested in reading them, I would suggest, for instance, Penguin Classics did a version, uh, a series of books years and years ago, called So and So in English, Horace in English, Catullus in English, which was a whole history of English language translations of the same poem. So you'd get you get many different translations of the same poem, and then on and on and on throughout that whole author's canon. Uh, and those books are great, not only because they show you all the different things that can be done with a static Latin text, but also because they give you an idea of whose translation style you might like to pursue. Almost every author who's represented in those books translated much more than just what you see, so you can go and find whose style you like. And I do recommend that, uh, I, because there's, you know, when we're talking about works of Roman literature that cast a long shadow, Horace and Catullus cast mighty long shadows. They are worth your time, but they're not on this list today because uh, of exactly that problem. There's, there's such a forest of other competing issues involved in recommending that kind of, of uh, poet's poetry. <laughs> if it were. And the same thing is true with drama. Roman drama is often, is often derided, especially by fans of Greek drama, and it, it merits that completely. It's, it's boneheaded. But it does introduce a couple of concepts that become monstrously important later on, especially in our own day. The, the, the 20th century sitcom is entirely Roman comedy and owes nothing to anything else. It owes nothing to any other uh, tradition of, of, of drama. It was just just adopted mutatis mutandis from, for, from TV networks. And that, that's important, how many of our fondest memories are sitcoms. Um, but I'm leaving the dramatists out too, and of course I'm leaving out the historians, even though that means my beloved Livy is not making the list. Instead I'm going to, because the works are long, I'm going to concentrate on just two that you have to read, and that you have to read in their entirety, even though they're both really long. Uh, first is Virgil's Aeneid. Uh, and the, the translation that I recommend is Alan Mandelbaum's, uh, both for the same reasons that we've talked about before with translation in, in this series and in other videos that I've made. Not just for the, the clean accessibility of the English translation that he creates, but also for his critical apparatus, which is superb, and which you kind of sort of need to help you through uh, the Aeneid. I mean, you can read the Aeneid without any critical apparatus whatsoever, but Virgil was an extremely egg-heady, scholarly author, and, and uh, would probably have wanted himself for you to go at his book with some help uh, to get as much of what he's doing as you can in English. Uh, the, both of these works, the works that I'm recommending, are greatly diminished in any English translation, even the best. So I'm afraid there's nothing we can do about that unless you learn Latin. Uh, which is not entirely impossible, <laughs> but I won't stress that. The, the, so I would recommend the Alan Mandelbaum translation, but there are lots of others. So again, you know, go to your library uh, and just sample a few and see who has the voice you like the most. Uh, and the second book is is my favorite book of them all, of its Metamorphoses. Likewise, hugely influential. Likewise, hugely important. Uh, also long, and the devil's own work to translate. Oh, uh, but the one that I recommend is by Horace Gregory. It's from, I think, 60 or 70 years ago, but it still stands up. It still does a really good job, especially of conveying the, the, the constant, uh, it's like the Russian nesting dolls of its stories, one inside another, inside another, inside another, all blending together and moving in different ways. It, he does a very good job of conveying that, a job that a lot of English translators not only don't do, but don't try to do, because they're a little worried that it's a little too much. Ovid wrote the poem to be blazingly complex. Same thing as Virgil. They both did. They were working for that. Uh, so you, you have to sort of deal with that. Ovid is a lot more enjoyable than Virgil, but 
but Virgil didn't write his book for you to enjoy it quite in the same way. So, but they are both amazingly good. Both poems are amazingly good. So, I highly recommend them, and they will do it for uh, the Roman segment of our starter kit. Just find an English translation that you like of either one of those and read the whole of them. <laughs> read the whole of the Aeneid and read the whole of, of his Metamorphoses. I would, I would strongly urge you, if you have the time and they have the energy, <laughs> uh, to branch out. Read some Livy. Read all of Horace. Read all of Catullus. Read all of Propertius. But even if you don't do that, uh, do, do those two. And that will do it for this latest installment. That is the Roman segment of the Western Canon Starter Kit. And uh, after this, we're going to take a little bit of a jump. <laughs> we'll, we'll stick with, uh, with at least one author who would have called himself a Roman, but things have changed completely. <laughs> and, uh, I'll, and I'll take you through it nice and slow. <laughs> but w after the Romans, after the classical Romans, we start to voyage into a, into a little bit of strange territory, and I'll be right here the whole time uh, with recommendations. Uh, but that's it for now. So uh, get to work, <laughs> and I'll see you soon. Thank you, Book 2.